Okay, so let's see if you can solve this math problem without using a calculator. All right, so the question is we want to calculate the perimeter of this rectangular window. Now, the dimensions of this window are 108 and 3 8 inches by 48 and 1 half inches. Now, we do have a multiple choice question here, and all these numbers are in inches. So A is 190.50. B is 280.30, C is 300.25, and D is 313.75 inches. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you want a nice, easy-to-understand way to learn math, well, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, we're trying to calculate the perimeter of this window. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I forgot what the perimeter stands for. What does it mean? Well, I'll tell you that in just one second. But uh, another thing that I need to remind you here is that we are talking about a rectangular window. So the shape of this uh, window is a rectangle. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is D, which is 313.75 inches. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face in the A+. Plus. And if you're like, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I still don't remember what the perimeter is or how to calculate it. Can you help me out? Well, I definitely can. So the first thing that we need to do is review what the perimeter is. Now, this is not that difficult. All the perimeter is is the sum total distance around a figure. Now, because we have a rectangle and we know the length and the width of the rectangle, we can actually calculate the perimeter. So uh, let's just recall a basic property of rectangles, and that is opposite sides are the same in length or congruent. So we have the length over here, which means we have this side as well. They are the same. So we have the width, which means this side is the exact same as this side. All right, so we can add up all these fractions, but a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I really don't want to add up all these fractions. Is there a better way to solve this problem? Well, actually, in this particular uh, case, there is a nice, easy way to identify and select the correct answer here. Because we do have a multiple choice question, we can actually uh, round these numbers right here to identify the right answer. All right, so what am I talking about? Well, we have 108 and 3 eighths as our length. Let's just call that 100. Now, this is a uh, pretty rough rounding, but you'll get the idea here in just one second. Now let's call the width 50. So that means this side over here is 50 and this side right here is 100. All right, so what's the perimeter of this rectangle? Well, it's 100 and another 100 and 50 and 50, so that is 300. All right, so it appears to be that our perimeter is going to be at least in the ballpark of 300. So we could pretty much uh, safely eliminate uh, choices A and B. Now what you can do here, just to be certain that you pick the right answer, is to round these numbers uh, you know, more precisely. So instead of 108 and 3 eighths, instead of rounding that to 100, let's maybe call that 108, and then this uh, 48 and 1 half we'll call 49. Now when you calculate the perimeter here, you're going to get pretty close to the correct answer, which of course is D. All right, now if we didn't have a multiple choice question, well, we have no other option other than to add up these fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. So effectively, this is the actual problem. So here's our window with the dimensions. So the length, uh, the actual length is 108 and 3 8 inches, and the width is 48 and 1 half inches. So the perimeter here is going to be the sum total of all the sides. All right, so the perimeter is going to be equal to 48 and 1 half inches plus 48 and 1 half plus uh, 108 and 3 8 plus 108 and 3 8 Okay, so we have to deal with this fraction uh, problem, and there's different ways you can go about doing this, but uh, let me go ahead and show you the way I'm going to approach it. So I'm going to look for easy opportunities here, right? So I'm kind of looking at this 48 and 1 half and 48 1 half, and I'm saying, well, I got 48 and 48. So just remember with the mixed number fraction, 48 and 1 half, 
this means 48 plus 1 half. So we can actually kind of split that mixed number fraction. So we have 48 and 48 and a 1 half and 1 half. So 1 half and 1 half is what? Well, hopefully you know that's 1. And then we have 48 and 48. So that's 96 plus 1 is 97. All right, so that's the uh, first two fractions. And now we need to work on this group right here. Okay, so what do we need to do? Well, again, you know, there's different ways you can approach this. So maybe you can kind of think about how you would add up these two fractions. You have 108 and 3 eighths plus 108 and 3 eighths. Okay, so I'm going to take a different strategy here just to show you that there are options. So what you can do is the following. Okay, so we have two. We can split this uh, 108 and 3 eighths. So we have two 108s and two 3 eighths. So 2 times 108 is 216, and then 2 times 3 eighths when you're multiplying fractions. Remember, um, you're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators, but here you can cross-cancel that 2 with this 8, so that's going to be 3 fourths. All right, so now we have uh, 216 plus 3 fourths, and of course when we add these up, we will have that second group. All right, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now my goal on YouTube is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable and interesting manner. But I'm also trying to uh, reach and help as many people as possible. And I can't do that unless I get the support of people like yourself. And the best way to support this channel is to literally hit that subscribe button and if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Also, remember, if you really want to uh, learn math from me, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And uh, some of the stuff that we're talking about here is kind of basic geometry. So you may want to uh, check out like my pre-algebra geometry or maybe even my math skill rebuilder course if you need more help. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem because there's really not much to do. So recall the perimeter is uh, really the sum total of all four sides. Now we added up the widths here, so that was 48 and 1 half plus 48 and 1 half, so that's 97. And then we have 108 and 3 eighths plus 108 and 3 eighths, and that is 216 plus this 3 fourths. So what we can do here is add the 97 with the 216, that gives us 313. And then we'll just go ahead and add in the 3 fourths. Now remember our uh, multiple choice question, the answer was a decimal. Okay, so 3 fourths is equivalent to the decimal 0.75. So remember, uh, when you're, uh, remember, when you're changing a fraction to a decimal, all you have to do is to divide the numerator by the denominator. But to hopefully most people uh, recognize or know that 3 fourths is equivalent to the decimal 0.75. Now remember, we are talking about perimeter here, so we have to add in the units of measure, which are in inches. All right, so hopefully this was a good uh, quick review about perimeter. And again, if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I once knew this stuff, but I forgot this. Well, no big deal, all right? So the idea in terms of learning math is to understand the concepts and then practice, practice, practice. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.